This is a third gen Tundra. And this is the second gen Tundra. When the new truck came out, most reviews were about the bold look, big screens, horsepower and torque. Those are important, but as a 4x4 enthusiast, I found so many mechanical changes that didn't get the proper attention. Those changes are way more relevant to overlanders and off-roaders like us. So in this video, we will review the top 4 mechanical changes I really like. But for the same 4 items, I also found Toyota have some pretty weird design choices. You'll see what I mean. First, the frame. The second gen has open C-channel after the transmission. It was well known to have some pretty extreme frame flex. I mean, just look at that. Yeah. I see the bed is... I saw the bed is all wobbly, do you see that? Yeah. Because it's C-channel, right? Yeah. The new frame is now fully boxed, and is 20% stronger and more rigid. This is much more suitable for those heavily loaded overland build. The rear section of the frame was widened by 8 inches, so the top of the rear shocks are now mounted further outwards. This increased the stability, especially under heavy load. However, most people didn't know the mid section of the frame is actually 8 inches narrower. Yes, you heard that right. The frame rail is 4 inches more inboard from each side. And there are two consequences to this. First, rock sliders now have 4 inches more overhang, a 44% increase in bending moment. So they will be weaker and have more deflection. Not good for serious off-road. Overlanders would care that the gas tank is now 6 gallons smaller, a 16% decrease. Although the final range is still similar, thanks to the improved efficiency. It would have been a lot cooler if we still have the 38 gallon tank. Because range is king for overlanding. The reason for a narrower midsection was to share the design with the Land Cruiser 300 series. Commonizing design is the key strategy of the Toyota new global architecture. But this leads me to the second change. Steering. This is the tie rod, and it transfers all the steering force. On most IFS 4x4, bending the tie rod is a very common failure. Because most tie rods are deliberately weakened to protect the steering rack, acting like a mechanical fuse. However, the second gen Tundra is a total badass. The inner tie rods are crazy thick with no neck down section. It can do this because it has a bulletproof steering rack. But if we compare side by side, the third gen tie rod is 32% thinner. It actually measured closer to my FJ Cruiser than to its predecessor. Come on, Toyota. I thought this was supposed to be born for Invincible. This change is definitely bad for off-road. Toyota's intention might be mass reduction for ride and handling. But check out the 300 series and the LX600. They still have the beefy tie rods. Huh. So we're willing to commonize the narrow frame, but not the steering? But here comes a plot twist. Toyota includes tie rod reinforcement sleeves in the TRD lift kit. Uh, okay, but why not just use the Land Cruiser design in the first place? This was quite puzzling to me, but on the bright side, the tie rod sleeves suggest the steering rack is still bulletproof like before. So I guess the new Tundra was born for Invincible after all. And this new steering rack is another change I really liked. First, it changed from hydraulic power steering to a rack mounted electric assist, which is a lot simpler. We got rid of one pump, a whole bunch of hoses, and have one less fluid to maintain. But I know what some of you are thinking. No, oh, hydraulic steering is always better. That is almost the politically correct thing to say among car guys. But we need to first understand why. Yes, hydraulic steering 
could better transmit fast jerks and vibration back to the steering wheel as feedback, which is desired for dedicated track cars. But the Tundra is not a track car with stiff, low-profile tires. In fact, to improve comfort, Toyota intentionally used soft steering rack bushings to absorb those vibrations. So we weren't getting most of the feedback in the first place. On the other hand, the new electric steering rack is much more rigidly mounted to the frame, with three bushings compared to only two for the second gen. This significantly reduced rack movement and tightens up the steering. The overlanders would enjoy the better handling, and the hardcore off-roaders would appreciate the more robust mounting. And right next to the new steering rack is the next change I want to review. The front differential. In particular, how it is mounted to the frame. The second gen front diff has two long arms mounted to the bottom of the crossmember. As a result, all skid plates need to have these tall structures to go around these mounts. Not only do we lose ground clearance, these are also the weak points of the skid. I have seen so many bending or cracking of these posts on the skid plate. The third gen on the other hand has two stubby arm mounted above. We now have a completely flat bottom, so the new skid plate can have a much simpler and more robust design. This is a huge improvement for both off-road and overlanding. However, connecting to the front diff, I found some really weird changes. This is the CV axle from the second gen. And this is the third gen axle. Pretty much the same thing, just a thicker shaft. But wait, this is the other third gen axle. The new truck actually has a longer axle on the passenger side. In the past 20 years, all Toyota trucks has the same axles left and right. So hardcore off-roaders just need to carry one spare. But now we need to carry two different ones. What's more puzzling to me is the longer one goes into the differential tube. So why not just extend this tube and make both sides the same? And wait, there's more. These red axles are special to TRD Off-Road and TRD Pro. All other third gen model actually have downgraded black axles. Instead of the double offset inner joints, these black axles have smaller tripod joints which are weaker and has less angle. Meanwhile, all second gen came with the better double offset joints. So if you plan to buy a base third gen and build it up for off-road, you will need to upgrade the axle. Now, let's move to the back of the truck. The changes I want to focus on here are all about ground clearance. I have seen some people pointed out that the new Tundra lost two inches in ground clearance. That's a lot. And according to the official product spec, indeed, the second gen has 10.4 inches of minimum ground clearance, while the third gen only has 8.5. But how is this possible when we have similar tire size and similar ring gear size? Well, because it is not possible. This official product spec was actually incorrect. When I measure a physical truck, I got the same 8.5 inches under the diff, just like the third gen. Well, glad I double checked. But beyond the rear diff, there were two real changes to ground clearance. First, the lower shock mounts now hangs one and a quarter inch lower. These got hit very often during off-road. Just look at my FJ for reference. So I really wish Toyota could shift the entire rear shock upwards. We got so much room up here. The other change is the new lower link mounts. They hangs four inches below the frame rail, while the old leaf springs were completely tucked away. This again is a very common area to get hung up on. Just clearing your control arms. So not ideal for technical off-road. However, the new multi-link coil sprung rear suspension brings fundamental improvements to ride quality and handling. I think even more so than most people have given it credit for. So if you want to have a technical understanding of the new suspension, both front and rear, go watch my last video. 
I also want to thank all the Toyota enthusiasts who made this video possible. Kong from 4-Wheel Drive's live channel contributed his second gen to go on my lift. Josh and James helped me film a lot of off-road footage. Nick and Greg from Koch 33 Toyota lent me thousands of dollars worth of parts so we could have these insightful comparisons. I will leave all their social links in the description below. Thank you for watching, I will see you in the next one.